Hi, I'm Mrs McTaggart and I'm going to take you through paper G of the practice papers on the National 5 Maths website. This is paper one, so non-calculator. Question one is a divide by fraction. So the number one rule with dividing in times and fractions is they have to be top heavy first. So I'm going to rewrite this sum as two fifths divided by, and I make that top heavy, one would be 10 tenths with an extra one as 11 tenths. Now the rule with um, dividing fractions is I say keep it, change it, flip it. So we keep the first one, we change the sign, and we flip the second fraction. Now from there, you could turn that into 20 over 55 just by straightforward multiplying, or you can cancel the fives and the tens. Uh, dividing by five is two, dividing by five is one, so that leaves you with four over 11 for your answer. Okay, as I said, you could have said that it was 20 over 55 and then divided them both by five. Question two says factorise fully. The fact that it says fully means there's a wee bit extra to it. The marking at the side um, also makes it worth two marks, which means it's more than just one line of working. So first thing you should notice is there is a common factor of two in there. If you take out the common factor of two, you're left with m squared minus nine. Always check the bit in the brackets because m squared minus nine is the difference of two squares. Square root of nine is three, so that is m plus three m minus 3. So factorise fully means there's a bit more to it than just a common factor, okay? Just a common factor question is not that 5, that is national 4. So there you go. Question 3 is functions. So you'll notice that the x has been changed to minus 3, so that's what we're going to do. So f of minus 3 is 5 take away minus 3 squared. Now minus 3 squared is positive 9, so we've got 5 minus 9, which is minus 4. Nice and easy, those ones. Question four says to solve the equation. The first thing I'm going to do is try and get rid of that fraction. So to eliminate the fraction, it's a divide by two on that side, so a times by two on the other side. And because there's two terms, I'm just going to put it in a bracket. You could have gone straight to doubling both of them, making it 6x plus two, but in my experience, people forget to double that number one. And that leaves me with that. So times that out gives me 6x plus two equals x minus five. Move letters left, numbers right. So you've got 6x take away x. And on the right, you've got minus 5 minus 2. So tidying up, we have 5x equals minus 7. Don't be put off that it doesn't divide nicely. It doesn't always with algebra, with equations with fractions because it's really hard to get it to work out. So we leave it as minus 7 over 5. You could also say that that was minus 1 and 2 fifths, but why bother? Next question is our third in simplest forms. Now you always have a clue in these ones because there's a root seven means there's a seven goes into everything else. So the 63 can be written as nine times seven. The 28 can be written as four times seven and the end term you leave as is. I always put the square number first because that's the one that's then going to simplify. Root nine gives you three. Root four gives you two. And the last one we can't do anything with. And then it's just a case of adding all the numbers in front. Remember, there's a secret number one in the last one. So you're doing three plus two take away one, which is four. So final answer, four, root seven. Question six is completing the square. That's your clue to do completing the square the minute you see it written in that form. So our bracket is half of 10 is five. So x plus five, all squared. You then take away whatever this bit is squared. So we take away 25. And then we add back in the 17 that was in the original question. Then you tidy up the right-hand side. Minus 25 plus 17 is uh, minus 8. That's us done. That's all for that one. Sometimes it would ask you for the turning point. If it asked you for the turning point, it would be the opposite of what's in the bracket. And then your end bit. But it doesn't ask for that. Question 7 is our... Simultaneous equations. Alan's taking part in a quiz. He gets X for a correct answer, Y for a wrong answer. During the quiz, he gets 24 questions correct and 6 wrong, and he scores 60 points. So there is our sentence. 12 correct, 6 wrong, 60 points. Sorry, so 24 correct. So 24 correct is 24X. 6 wrong is 6Y and 60. Now, this is an old-fashioned question. Normally, they don't tell you to use X and Y anymore. They let you use whatever you wanted. So you would probably use C for correct and W for wrong, but we have to go with what they've given us. Second person gets 20 correct, so 20X. Uh, she gets 10 wrong, so 10Y and a score of 40. What we have to do now is calculate a third scenario. So before we do that, we're going to go use simultaneous equations to work out what 
um, your score is for a correct and a wrong answer. So I've just copied the questions down a bit further down so that I have space to do the working. Now, everyone teaches simultaneous equations a bit different. I always teach to get the middle ones into a similar value and one a plus, one a minus. So the smallest number that's 6 and 10 both go into is 30. So I'm going to times the top one through by 5 and the bottom one through by negative 3. So 5 times 24 is um, 120. So you've got 120x plus, 30, oops, plus 30y equals 300. Remember, this is a calculator paper, so use your calculator just in case you make mistakes. Times the bottom one through by minus 3 gives me negative 60x, negative 30y, and negative 120. I can then add these two rows together. So 120 minus 60 is 60x. 300 take away 120 is 180, which divides lovely by 60. 180 divided by 60 is just 3. So that means we get three points for a correct answer. So I'm just going to write that over there. So correct is three points. And then I'll get ready to write what a wrong answer is. Now that I know that x is three, I'm going to sub that back into one of my equations. I usually use a top equation, but for this one, I think the bottom ones get easier numbers. So you've got 20 times three plus 10y equals 40. So that gives you 60 plus 10y equals 40. Move the 60 over, it will become negative. So 40 take away 60 is minus 20. So y equals negative 2 when you divide that by 10. So a wrong answer is minus 2 points. And that makes sense. You'll get points for it correct and two points taken off for having it wrong. If I do a quick double check of my answer, um, 24 times 3 is 72. Um, take away 12 is 60, so I know I've got the right answers as well. Plus, they were nice full numbers. If I got decimals or anything in there, it was a clue that something's gone majorly wrong. So, right, new scenario wants 17 correct. So we've got 17 times 3, and then 13 wrong. So it's 13 times minus 2. 17 times 3 um, is 51. Take away 26 gives you 25. So that is what David gets. So David's score is 25. Okay. So watch out for that. Sometimes people miss that third scenario because that used to try and just being told to find out what you get for a correct or a wrong answer. Question eight, we have missing angles. So I'm told that PB is a diameter, CR is a tangent. So that means I've got a 90 to look out for somewhere. And we want the size of angle... Um, EPR. So EPR is this full angle here. So I'm just going to mark that one. And then I'm going to make this a wee bit bigger. So they mentioned there was a tangent. So the tangent is whenever your radius and whenever your radius and tangent meet means we've got some right angles going on. So here is a right angle. And on the other side is also a right angle. So that means this part of what I'm after is 90. So I need to find this other side. So let's have a look what else we can do. Um, we also have, we're told that P to B is a diameter. That means that PEB is a right angle triangle here. The, tra the angle on the outside is always 90, so it makes also that that one is 90 on the other side. So we have two different ways to go. We can go find angle P or we can go find angle B. It doesn't really matter. I'm just going to go find this one in here. Angle P is 90 plus 48 is 138. 180 take away 138 leaves me with 42. So this angle in here is 42. Similarly, that angle at the top is also 42 using the giant PBC triangle. So that's also 42. And then I would just use the fact that this whole angle here is 90. 90 take away 42 is 48. So the angle they were after, angle EPR equals 48 plus 90 which is 138 degrees. Always, always draw your numbers on the diagram and show clearly what your final answer is at the end to gain full marks. Question nine is the equation of a straight line. It's from a scatter graph, so your coordinates aren't the most obvious, but they're actually given to you in the story. So someone who gets 12 for history would be along 12 and 20 for geography would be up 20. So that's your coordinates there. So we've really got, I'll do it up here, we've got 12, 20, and the other one would be 90 to 80. 
and we have to find the equation of this line of best fit and then at the end we're going to change it into h and g so first thing to do is your gradient so that's subtracting your y's 80 take away 20 on the top and 92 take away 12 on the bottom so our gradient is 60 over 80 20 times table that goes down to 3 over 4 now we don't know our c value so we're going to use the y minus b equals m bracket x minus a equation so i'm going to come down here so y minus b equals m bracket x minus a now i know my gradient is three quarters and i'm going to choose the coordinate 12 20 that's going to be my a and my b value so i've got y take away 20 equals three quarters bracket x minus 12. Two options here. Option one is you multiply the whole left -hand side hand side by four and then rearrange some stuff. But technically, you can times that bracket out by three quarters because you can work out three quarters times 12 nicely. Um, the only time I would tell you not to bother doing that is if you couldn't find three quarters. So, for example, that being 11, it would end up as decimals. So I'm just going to go to that bit. So you've got y equals 20 equals three quarters x. Three quarters of 12 is good. I'll divide with the bottom times the top. 12 divided by 4 is 3 times 3 is 9, so that's minus 9. Move that 20 over and make it positive. So you've got 3 quarters x minus 9 plus 20 is plus 11. The last thing to do is change your letters to fit the diagram. So the x-axis had changed to an h and the y-axis had changed to g for geography. So your geography score is 3 quarters of your history score plus 11. So there is your final answer. Now, what they normally do in those ones is they then ask you to do a prediction and predict what someone got in geography who got like 20 in history. You would then substitute in, but there's none of that on this one. Okay, so next question, we're told that this is a kite and we're told some information. We're told that PT is double whatever TR is. It tells us that P to R is the vector A. Um, QS represents vector B. And P, we have to work out what P to S is. Right, so this bit here, basically, if this is double, if PT is double the bottom one, then this is like really worth, I'm going to put some numbers on here. So this is kind of like worth two and this is worth one. And then it tells us that um, Q to S is worth B. So like this wee bit here is a half B and this wee bit here is a half B. Now, if I was going to travel... From P to S, I would have to come down here. See the bit I'm doing in yellow? I would have to come down here and along here. Okay. Now, that means I've come down two-thirds of the way of the line PR. So, I've got two-thirds. Now, PR was t told it was A. So, I've got to come down two-thirds of A. And then I'm only going halfway along B. So there is the answer for that one. And sorry, that's in a horrible yellow colour. So two-thirds A plus a half B. Okay, so the two-thirds is because that bit is double. P to R is double this part. So it splits in the ratio two to one. That's a tricky one. Question 11 is of non-calculator sign rule by the looks of it at first glance. So... <clears throat> they have asked you basically to find sign B, right? Um, they, so that's kind of like our unknown. That's what we're here after. Now, to find an angle, cosine rule needs all three sides. So it's clearly not cosine rule. So we're going to work through this and pretend we were doing it with a calculator. So we would have little b over sine B equals um, little c over... No, we're not using A, so not using C, sorry we would have little a over sine a because we know little a and we know little b. So we're using the a's and the b's. So little b is 4 over sine b, which we don't know. Little a is 10 and sine a is 150. Okay. We're going to rearrange this a wee bit. We want sine b up to the top. So we're going to have 4 times sine 150 equals 10 sine b. We're going to then divide by 10. So we've got 4 sine 150 divided by 10 equals sine b. Now, it doesn't look anything like a fifth right now. However, we're going to come over here 
sine b, 4 over 10 is 2 fifths. So I'm going to leave that as 2 fifths times. Now, sine 150. They've told you that sine 30 is a half. If I draw a quick sine graph here, they've told you that sine 30 is a half. 150 here is basically, if you've already done trig great equations, this is dead simple for you. These both have the same answer, right? They're both 30 away from those um, roots. So 30 is uh, 30 going that way, 150 is 30 going that way. So using symmetry, they're the same answer. So sine 150 is worth a half. So sine 150 is also worth a half. So that gives you two fifths times a half. Now then that gives you two over 10, which is one fifth. So sine B equals one fifth as required. Tricky question, okay? The, the difficulty with that one is knowing how to start it. Start with sine rule, see how far you can get. It's worth four marks. Everyone should probably be able to get down to this line here and get maybe three. Question 12 is an endless question with fractions. Nobody really likes these, but the rule is when you're multiplying fractions, you add the powers. So we have b to the power 1 half plus 5 halves. If you're struggling, you can do it at the sides. Gives you 6 halves. Now, 6 halves is the same as the power 3. So you've got b cubed over b squared. Now we're dividing, so you subtract the power. So you've just got b to the power 1, or plain old b. Question 13 is a divide by fractions. So remember, my wee rule with dividing by fractions is keep it. So keep the first one. Change it. So change the sign. Flip it. Keep it, change it, flip it. So we flip the second fraction. Options from here is we can do some cross-cancelling or we can just multiply straight across. So I'm going to do both. If I'm just multiplying straight across, that gives me 10p squared all over 8p. 10 over 8, um, both divide by 2, so that gives you 5 over 4. p squared divided by p just goes down to p. So you've got 5 quarters p. You could also write that as 5p over 4. That means the exact same thing. If you were going to do the cross-cancelling method, you could have cancelled here and said, well, that's 1, that's 4, that's p, and that's just 1, leaving you with 5p times 1, which is 5p in the top, 4 times 1 on the bottom. So it's your preference, okay? Right, question 14. The last question is the hideous 2 mark um, show that trig identity question. So when you're told your trig identities, you're told to remember the formulas tan x equals sin x over cos x. That's one of them. You're also told that sin squared x plus cos squared x equals 1. Now, using this second equation here, we can rearrange that. We can say that cos squared x is the same as 1 minus sin squared x. You can also do it the other way and write that sine squared x equals something, but we're not going to do that because we don't need it for this one. I have a 1 minus sine squared up there. Here is 1 minus sine squared there. So the bit I've circled is equal to cos squared x. So I'm going to rewrite this as sine squared a over cos squared a. Now, if you've got sine over cos, that equals tan. I've got sine squared over cos squared. That just means I have got tan squared. So it equals tan squared a as required. If you don't believe me for that bit, think of sine squared as being um, sine over cos times sine over cos. That's just the same as tan times tan, which is tan squared. And that's the end of that paper. Thanks very much.